so the cheesy music that I'm playing right now. But I really wanted to play this song for you because it wasn't actually created by a human, it was created by AI. And today, this is what I'm going to talk to you about, about how we can use technology for really cool stuff. So I'm actually lucky enough to just tell you about cool things that other people have done today. So let's get started. So the talk is going to be pretty much structured into like, here's a field, here's some cool stuff that is happening, and it's gonna go all the way from like digital art onto science and so on. We're gonna start off with science at the moment. This is a very generic topic, I know, uh, but I didn't know where else to put, what else to group these things under. So here we've got CERN. So CERN, for example, they're the nuclear research in uh, Switzerland. And they're currently doing a lot, they're the ones with a Large Hadron Collider, which is that particle accelerator, that big tube that they just accelerate particles down and they do really cool stuff. And um, they're currently using machine learning to predict the results of collisions of these particles before they happen. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, they also have all of their data is actually available online. So if you just search for CERN data sets, um, you will find their actual open data set. So if you want to use some machine learning to actually play around with some of the CERN data, go ahead and do it. Um, then we've got uh, a lot of robots that are being used at the moment. Now we're going to mention some robots later on as well, but I just wanted to have like a generic group here too. For example, knife fish, uh, marine robots are being currently used to find mines around underwater because there have been a lot of leftover mines from back in the day. Um, they've also got robots detecting mixing of currents. So for example, there'll be a robot inside the water and it will go down, it will go up, and depending on the attributes of the water around it, it will determine like, how the currents are actually mixing. Then we've got uh, the sampling robots, such as the Curiosity rover. I'm sure you've heard about that one. It's the one in Mars and it samples the land and then tries to analyze certain things regarding that. Then we've got things like Event Horizon. Uh, the Event Horizon project is using a whole bunch of radio telescopes around the world. So these radio telescopes were originally built for their own purpose, and now there's supercomputers being trying to bring them together, all, all of the signals together, to try and get, like, make a giant telescope. We've also got simulation of quantum body systems. Um, so quantum body systems are small, like, microscopic systems where there are many, in this case, bodies would be particles and many particles will interact with each other. So the more particles you add in, the more types of interactions that you can have, uh, the more like probability there will be. And um, because of that, there's like more complex system because you have way too many particles and um, simulating this is very difficult. So people are now trying to use uh, artificial intelligence to actually try to do those simulations. Uh, the pictures here are of a radio telescope and a large hadron collider. Now that you've seen me fail at explaining quantum physics, let's try to move into visual arts. It's a bit easier for me. Um, Marshmallow Laser Feast, for example, are doing some cool VR experiences. Um, they had this movie that was interactive. You would put like a VR set on and um, you would pretty much watch a movie, but you're kind of inside it. So they've got quite a few exhibitions like that where you can just experience some cool uh, virtual reality thing. Then the Spectrum here in Berlin, they have a lot of different types of exhibitions, but some of them actually uh, involve a lot of technology. For example, the Smell Lab, one of our colleagues' partners was actually part of this. She created uh, virtual reality where, uh, depending on what was happening here, different smells would get released. They've also got uh, meetups to use um, AI in creative fields, such as like, creative writing and uh, painting and things like that. And they've used mathematical models to also create like, light sculptures. And all of this has been happening, like has been shown in the spectrum in Berlin. And they've got many things coming up as well that you can maybe check out if you're interested. Um, there's also, I've got my last point, says digital artists. I mean, it's very generic. Um, here I wanted to talk to you about a friend I've got in South Africa. He's a digital artist and he worked together with a sculptress who created these really big, beautiful sculptures that are shown on the corner here behind my head. Uh, those sculptures there, and they were very, very big. Uh, my face was about their stomach height. And he placed Arduino boards above them, and the closer you would get, so these Arduino boards would have proximity sensors, and the closer you would get to the statues, the louder this epic music would play. So as, long, as soon as there were many people around these statues, it was super epic music. So it was, it was really interesting thing to see. I don't know why I split music and film, I could have just had like arts, but music and film have some really cool stuff happening as well. I mean, we've had software to adjust like if you play the wrong tune for quite a long time. But uh, the music that I played this morning, that's that I made using Jit Deck. So it's a website, you just sign up and you go, cool. I selected cinematic 
sci-fi with a climax, and that's what's played this morning. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and the idea is that if you, for example, are an uh, indie film artist and you, you don't really have the budget to pay for royalties for like many songs for your movie, you can then go and create um, these songs using JigTag. And I mean, they're pretty good. I, I enjoyed the opening song. I hope you did too. <laughs> Um, then we've also got digital de-aging. So um, Lola VFX have been using, uh, have been doing 3D models of actors' faces, and then they use these uh, 3D models. Then they adjust them, which they call now digital cosmetics, and then you use CGI to place that over the face. And then um, this picture over here is extracted from a video. And if you actually watch the video online, uh, you can see the person moving around, and like, it's, it's quite, quite realistic looking, it's quite good. Transport is one of the more obvious ones. I mean, as you'll see, I've put Uber and Lyft here, but I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty cool that we can just order a ride, we, we can track where the ride is coming in, and um, we can also, it's a collaborative kind of ride system, right? So, um, we pretty much Uber drivers can sign up and like, become drivers and have some work to do, and then people can find lifts wherever they are. Then we've got driverless cars. I mean, there are many uh, debates of whether those are gonna work because of not having everything being driverless cars, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Um, they have been used in the truck industry already, and in Switzerland, we've got the Vesmal project where um, driverless bus experiment is taking place. We'll see how that goes, hopefully well. And then we've got delivery bots, uh, which Starship's Technologies and Amazon have been experimenting with. Um, I don't know if it's where I've lived before, but when I saw a delivery bot, I was like, that's an easy way to get a new package and a bot, if you just throw a rock at it. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I don't know if I've just come from strange places. <laughs> uh, health has had some really cool stuff happening as well. So. One of the things is a VR headset to diagnose MS in Parkinson's. So um, they, I saw a video of this. They put a VR set and there's a game, like a balancing game, and depending on how the person reacts to the balancing game and the changes in posture, they can actually use this for some kind of diagnosis or at least to point to a diagnosis. Um, then there's ADA, which is an app that gives you symptoms. You give it uh, symptoms and then it gives you like a diagnosis. Now, I don't know if any of you have tried to Google your symptoms when you're sick. You're always pregnant. <laughs> so I don't know how this does, but hopefully the only answer is not just you're pregnant. Um, there's sensium vitals as well. So these are wearables that have been used to actually monitor patients. So um, after surgery, certain patients might deteriorate in a certain manner, and in order to avoid things that are avoidable by just having some monitoring, these wearables are being used. Um, there have also been photos that you can take photos of a microscope uh, slide and uh, use, uh, send that to the cloud and then use some machine learning algorithms to analyze this. That's pretty cool for areas that might not be able to afford like a very high-tech um, microscopes. Uh, we've also got disease outbreak mapping that was quite useful for the Ebola outbreaks because then you can track where the disease is going and not just where people are moving but also where, for example, this area that has an outbreak and there has been a bat fluctuation towards that area, for example. So um, then you can see the correlations and find, hopefully find some causations as well. Um, in Vietnam, SMSs have been sent to a server to actually uh, determine if there are outbreaks happening in certain areas. I mean, it's a simple thing, but it, they need some kind of centralized uh, place to put this information in order to determine whether there are outbreaks or not because as one hospital, you're kind of isolated. Then there's also DeepMind and the National Health um, Service. And they're using machine learning to determine cancer treatment depending on the attributes of uh, cancer that you have. And um, their data is actually also available online. So if you go on Kaggle, which is where you can find a lot of data sets for machine learning stuff, um, I think they have a competition. So if you want to try and win that, uh, the data for this particular thing is available. There have also been some applications for the minority groups. So, for example, Wayfinder is audio navigation. So, for, visually, for people that are visually impaired, uh, there's, uh, this audio navigation is actually aimed at them. Then there's also Chain, which is empowering women against violence and oppression. So, they have quite a few apps. They're also open source if you want to try and um, input there. 
Um, things like gamified training and applications for mental well-being are part of that. Defense. This one, like, I don't like talking about this one, but it is a big uh, player here. The reason for this is a lot of budget goes into defense, and therefore, like, cool technology can come out of it, but it is unfortunate. We've got mill GPS, like search and rescue applications, which is quite good. Uh, and then we've got augmented reality helmets. So if you go diving, you can have this augmented reality helmet that gives you extra information about your dives, which is quite useful. Uh, I mean, if you've ever gone, if you're an advanced diver, you probably have one of those watches that are about like three times your, the size of your arm that just shows you all that information. So here, now you can just see it. It's in your helmet. Uh, I don't know how heavy it is, so I don't know if it's very comfortable. Um, then we've got AI that uh, has been used to uh, analyze the fences and also um, suggest alternative targets. So, for example, this defense is too strong here, and this is like empty here, and no defenses attack there. Public safety. So, that's another cool one. Five minutes. Okay. Cool. Uh, public safety, we've got some uh, image recognition to identify uh, child, child exploitation images. We also have CCTV image analysis to anticipate crimes in Singapore. I'm sure there was a series on this where you could analyze like videos and it would determine what behavior might lead to certain crimes. Um, then there's also analysis to determine which uh, of the arrested people might uh, are likely to reoffend. And then the London Fire Brigade had something really simple, which is they now have a tag that they can mark when they've searched a room. It's something really simple, but it's going to save lives, which is quite good. And then drones detecting uh, traffic offenses in Canada. We also got uh, farming and mining. Uh, we're detecting the sex of chickens while they're still in the egg. I should have probably written that in the slide as well. Um, so while they're still in the egg, then you can uh, select. You've got, you want more hens, or you want these to be eggs instead. Um, then we've got uh, automatic assessment of all fragmentation. When mining takes place, uh, blasts need to happen and then fragmentation it causes it to be dangerous to actually work in that area. So you need to do this analysis before you actually blast the area so things don't start falling apart. Then you have uh, tractor the Autonomous Tractor Corporation, which uses tractors, autonomous tractors to spread seeds and also plow in straight lines and saving farmers money in the long run. Finance. Uh, this is one of my last ones. So this one's cool because in Berlin you have to pay with cash everywhere. So I was very surprised because I was living in South Africa and two of these things are from South Africa. So like Snapscan and Zapper, uh, they're competitors. And you pretty much use a QR code to pay a vendor. So a vendor would have this QR code and then you use the Snapscan application, scan it, say I want to pay this much and then it's linked to your account and then you just pay. I've used this in the market. Imagine paying with this at Mauer Park. It would be great. <laughs> Then we've got First National Bank. You could tap your phone against your friend's phone, like after setting up how much you want to pay them, and automatic transfer, done. You don't have to pay them cash after they've paid for something. And the stock exchange has been uh, pretty much algorithmic for a long time. And this is the last one, actually. OK, history. This one's really cool, but I'm going to have to rush through it. <laughs> so x-ray scans of fossils have been done. So you have a dinosaur. You x-ray scan it, and it shows you a lot more detail of this uh, because there's a lot of the parts of the fossil that you can't see because it will be this big rock and then like a dinosaur sticking out of it. Uh, photogrammetry, you can take photographs around an object, and then that creates a 3D mapping using triangulation. There are some apps for that that you can actually use. They're really slow. Obviously, there's like proper photogrammetry um, technology out there. But if you want to play around with it, there are apps. Uh, and they're quite fun. And then there's robotics um, used to map some shipwrecks. So they can use photogrammetry. They go underwater and then go around the ship and then create a 3D model. And then named entity recognition for historical records, finding things like a city name or a person's name repeated across different historical records. And then lastly, aerial photography and LIDAR. LIDAR is where you have a laser that shoots down, and depending on how long it takes to come back up, you get a different map of the ground. It looks through the vegetation, and it's really cool to find things like pyramids in Guatemalan jungles, So because it, the building it will bounce differently from. That's it. <laughs> cool, thank you. Any questions or any like things that you have heard about that are really cool? <laughs>